years ago, uh, I watched a, a program on TV about hair shows, and I watched the Constantine brothers from uh, from Cardiff doing these haircuts that were just amazing, the pompadours and the you know the perfect haircuts for guys. And I was about ten or eleven, and I thought to myself, that looks that looks really cool. That looks really cool thing to do. And then as life went on, I got a bit older and got to do the career thing at school and they said, what do you want to do? And I said, oh, I want to be a hairdresser. And they said, no, no, but your dad's a roof tiler, you know, be a roof tiler. I said, but I don't want to do that. So I took myself, took myself on, my, on my journey, went off to find myself an apprenticeship and uh, got an apprenticeship as a hairdresser originally. And within five, five or six weeks of uh, being, in, being in the shop, the boss said to me, stay behind tonight. I thought, oh, what have I done wrong? He said, uh, you're going to cut my hair. I thought, oh my God, you know, I've only been doing this five weeks, so I've cut his hair. And he had a flat top. So uh, he said, don't worry about it, I'm going to show you how to do it. Whilst you're cutting out. So he showed me how to do this flat top. It took me an hour and 40 minutes to cut his hair. Uh, but in the end, he had a perfect flat top. And I had, uh, had boosted my ego up a whole heap. And what happened then, after the next few weeks, is all the girls in the salon, uh, the time to get this, like, I don't like doing guys' hair, you know? So they were like, in you come, uh, he'll do it. So I got dropped right in the deep end, doing the guy's hair, in the salon, right from the word go. And that's what kind of put me on the career path of wanting to do barbering rather than, than hairdressing. Although at the time, that was, that was the trade, you know, it was hairdressing and, and men's. Um, so that's how, that's how I originally got into it. We went to college, um, it was a college thing, um, and, but, but one of the things, like, like all colleges, this is one of the things why we want to bring standards up in barbering, is that you tend to get, uh, there's a difference between the skill level in the, in the shop that you're getting taught and the skill level that you're getting taught in, in a college. So, you know, I, I did find that it was a slightly kind of, you know, I was learning more in the shop than I was at college, but, you know, you just have to go and, go and get to the end of the, end of the thing. And after uh, working for him for three years, I left and went to work for a, a bigger company to manage a shop for him. And I had 20 staff and um, I did that for a couple of years and then I opened my own shop in, in Doncaster, where I'm from originally. Yeah, well I think it's that I do, I do a classic gentleman's haircuts, you know. I, I don't, I do everything from a range from you know, the skin fade to, to, to you know, to a, a simple sort of short back and sides or a, or a long cut. I can do long hair as well because I'm trained in hairdressing. So there's one of the things that, um, you know, you can get anyone come through your door and I can do any haircut. Um, one of the things that I'm renowned for not doing is I don't do patterns and stars and stripes and things like that because when people leave my shop, I want them to look like they've got a nice classic haircut rather than something too modern and stuff. I don't mind that, I think, I think it has its place, but that's not what I, what I create in this shop. People that I look to for, for inspiration, um, young people, up and coming young people on Instagram. Um, uh, Nicholas the Greek, he's the man. He's, he's a young up and coming barber, he does some amazing work. Um, but also looking to the, 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 the you know, more senior cutters like um, Del Ted Watkins and, um, you know, Pete from Cutthroat Pete and stuff like that. And, um, you know, people are doing, kind of pushing boundaries and doing, but doing more classic things, you know, they're not, it's not um, looking at, you know, patterns and things like that. It's still more classic gentleman's haircuts, you know. Um, and seeing how, what I like to see is how things are changing. You know, I mean, you can see that very recently skin face and, you know, pompadours and stuff have been in vogue, but now it's starting to change a bit, coming more textured and different, you know, different lengths to hair. And, you know, it is going to end up going where somebody's going to come in and they've got hair down here and that, you know, they're not going to want much cut off. But, you know, that's how the barbering profession's got to move on and, and deal with that as well, you know. Um, and, and that's one of the important things about people training and getting upskilled in various things, you know. Um, which now there's a lot more offer than, than there used to be. You know, there's lots of training places that you can go to to learn different things. Um, particularly like over to uh, um, the old school in in Rotterdam for Shoreham, 
you know, they, they do in the courses over there, teaching more classic cuts. So, you know, the opportunity is there for people to learn more stuff. Um, but yeah, that's, that's who I sort of look to for my influence, you know, both ends of the spectrum, you know. Yeah, I, I, I teach at the, for Fife College. Um, next month I'm doing um, a beard facial hair cutting course for basically to upskill hairdressers because who have got male clients in their salon who they cut but they might have a beard, they don't feel confident with that because they've never done beard and moustaches and so it's to show them, you know, it's a small course to show them how they can do that and how they can look after the clients in a, for the facial hair um, and um, yeah and I do, I also teach a barbering course for them as well. I probably do, it, it varies, Some, sometimes you could do one a week, sometimes it could be, I mean I think my most I had was nine in a day and I just couldn't believe what was going off but there was a wedding and everybody that was going to the wedding, not the groom or the best man, it were all the people that were attending, they were all coming in for a shave before they went to the wedding so you know that was a, was a busy day on the old razor for me but um, you know one of the things that's changed about the shave is it used to be remove my hair from my face and now it's give me a treatment. So we've kind of adapted what we do here to make it more of a, a treatment, a, a relaxing thing. It's not just it's not just take the hair off my face because I've got a beard, you know, which is what it used to be um, in, in years gone by. So the Pro Raso pre shave, which is if anyone's ever smelt this stuff, it's oh, amazing, menthol. So we use that as a pre shave. Um, so what we do is we wet up the face, we use this pre-shave cream, lather up all over the um, beard and uh, face, then we use a, a hot towel from the machine which we've used uh, uh, an essential towel soak on so you get a really lovely smell, put that on, um, we leave that for one or two minutes to soften up the beard, then we give that a good rub off, um, once we've cleaned that off we then lather up using a badger hair brush and generally Depending on the client, we use Prorasso or use um, Taylor's of Old Bond Street. Um, lather up, then we'll shave with the grain in one direction. Hot towel again, clean all the bits off, lather up again, shave. Generally, I shave in the same direction with a lot of guys, unless they're a regular client, because um, men don't tend to shave as often as uh, they used to, and a lot of people come with a clipper cut, so they've got like a, you know, they tend to just clipper the beard off and they're coming for a shave as a treat. If you're shaving against the grain, you know, you can sometimes leave with a bit of irritation or you don't want them to, next, in the next couple of hours, have a red neck or whatever. So I tend to go with the grain second shave. Then we close that all off with a, a very, very cold towel. And um, then after we've done that, we put on a moisturizer, a touch of cologne. We dust them down with a, a powder towel and then we give them a head and shoulder massage with an Oster massager, uh, which generally makes them just float out of the shop and uh, make them come back next time, you know. When, when yeah. I first opened, uh, opened the shop, um, I did no appointments and the clientele built up really quickly. And so I found that we would have clients waiting two hours, two and a half hours, and it was great that the client loyalty was there for him to wait for, for, for that long. But I found that, um, you know, when you're sitting, when you're cutting behind the chair and you're looking at the guy who's fifth in the queue and he's looking at his watch and he's looking, he's read all the magazines, he's had a coffee, he's had a sleep, because my clients like to have a sleep in here it's nice and relaxing. Uh, he's had a sleep. He wakes up and you go, right, okay, he's still third in the queue. You know, and you can feel his pain, but there's nothing you can do about it. You can't make him jump the queue. So five weeks ago, I decided that we were going to make the to go to an appointment system. And what I've actually found is that it's much better for the clients. It's much better for me. It's much better for my stress levels because you don't kind of get like, oh, it's five to six, and you know what time to shut because you closed it. If your last client's at five thirty, you know that you're going to be leaving at six or whatever, just soon after. Um, but what I have found is that the clients have found, they've liked it not only because they've come in um, on time and having their appointment and having to wait, but they're also finding that the experience in the shop is more personal, you know, and 
sometimes you get people come in the shop, guy sitting in the chair, there's three people sitting in the queue, and the guy in the queue is butting in. Hey, how are you getting on the orchard? You know, and they're butting into the conversation that you're having with the client, which in some respects is a bit kind of, it's nice and social, but at the same time it's not very private. So that's, um, that's what I've found, is that the clients find it to be a lot more kind of private and personal. And also, when, you, when, you start to, when I started to do this, I found out that I've, I've got a client who's been coming to me for four years, and he, he's always saying, oh, I wish I could have a shave, I wish I could have a shave, I wish I could have a shave. So, do you want a shave today? No, no, no. Why? And then he told me eventually, why didn't you want to have a shave? He felt guilty taking up more of my time having a haircut and a shave when there were four people waiting in the queue. So he's actually coming in today for a shave for the first time because he's booked an appointment and he doesn't feel guilty. He knows that he's booked that time out and that's his time, my time and, and that's it. You know, he doesn't feel guilty about five people waiting in the queue while he's sitting back relaxing getting a shave, you know, or getting a head massage. Generally, if I've got appointments available, um, I've got a, a tablet which they can sit in the chair there and just book it themselves. Um, but we've kind of got through over the three month period of speaking to people and, well, first of all, asking people if they wanted it and then eventually getting through it and, and informing everybody. We're kind of getting there that walk-ins are only coming at the right time and if they are coming at the right time, they're coming back and booking in and they're quite happy with that because they know that they're not going to have to wait for an hour or two. Probably two places. One, one is the moment you put, hold the mirror up. Yeah, the moment you hold the mirror up to the client and they know you've finished, you dust them off, you hold the mirror up, and they go, "That's great." You know, that's to me, that's that's it every day, 10, 15, 20 times a day, or whatever I'm doing. That's the moment that you go, "That's why I do it." Um, but then the other side is also um, now the barbering's become such a big big thing and, and an open thing and there's lots and lots of ways for com to communicate with each other. I find that the, the camaraderie and stuff in the barbering community, I really, really enjoy that now as well, you know. Um, that's kind of one of the things that, that's good about it as well. So, um, When you look on YouTube, you see these guys using the tools and when you search and you can't find them in your own country, it's a bit sort of like, well, why can't I use an Andy's clipper like that? Where is that Andy? The, the, the famous sort of great team lining, you know, where did, where did that, where can you get that? And um, when, I, when I found out that, because I'd actually bought some before, years ago, and tried them, plugged them into one of the square boxes that you get from Macklin's, and it <laughs> vibrated like crazy, and I was like, oh. Um, somebody told me, uh, I, I took the, the case off and shoved foam in it, and we did that for a while, and I was kind of coping with it. It was just too, I couldn't even cope with it myself. It was too noisy, never mind the clients coming around the ear, like this around the ear, that's just it's too much. So when when I um, when I opened the shop, I don't have any I don't I don't have any media in the shop that's like news media or uh, I don't have the TV on with um, news or anything. So it's all when you come in here, it's like a little cocoon. And um, I didn't used to do any social media or anything. And when I first started on Instagram, not very long ago. That's when I found out that somebody was selling a converter that could actually make these things work properly. Um, so I wanted to, because I'd, I'd tried them before, so I know how, how good they were, but it would just they were very, very noisy. And um, so I wanted to try them properly. And so when I took the, the, these liners off of you, they're brilliant. They're just the best thing ever from shaping up. They're just, the lines are clean, um, they feel good because they're a nice heavy thing in your hand, they're not just light and flimsy. And um, and I obviously, I went, when I bought those, I, I went for a couple of other sets of clippers to try out as well, um, just to see what I thought to them. Uh, so that's, that's, that's why. Yeah, so particularly um, with, the, with, the, with the line up, lining up, um, I always used to, you know, if you really want to get it sharp, you'd have to get a blade out and, and take that away because like the other the other um, edges that you could get like the rechargeable ones they're rubbish they just don't get close enough you can't take the blade off from zero gap them um, and even if you do they still don't kind of work fully but when I got that T-liner that was perfect I, I, I feel 90% of my haircuts now I don't have to use a razor to clean up the edges you know because it, it, it's close enough um, 
train the new these um, and this uh, masters. These they're brilliant. I mean, I have the power that they've got in them is fantastic, and uh, I use them for just doing really short hair. <coughs> I tend to use Austin 97s a lot. Um, I've always used them because I like the the blade change, you know, so you swap the blades for different things. Um, because we've all had a we've all had a moment, a very mo a very bad moment where you're doing a fade and flip, oops, and it comes off, you know. The, but these new Andis guards are amazing because they're clip on and they're magnetic, so you don't have any of that worry. So when you you can really get into your fade without actually kind of worrying about whether the plastic uh, thing's going to flip off, you know. Mm -hmm. So using really short hair, using the masters. And, and using uh, using the the T liners for edging up, uh, I found those to be to be the best sort of thing to my armoury. Well, my message would be: um, if you want to get serious about your barbering, you need to get some American clippers because um, you're really never going to get that same result from the UK clippers unless and this do bring all of those models out and bring them over to the UK. You're never going to get close to it with the, with the stuff that you can get here. Um, because they're just not of the same quality. Um, I mean, I, I show my clients. My clients look at they look at the clippers and they see that you've got a new set. Oh, what are they? And look, especially with the masters, they look at them, the big silver clippers, and they go, "What are they?" And you go, "They're my new clippers." And they go, "Oh, they're a good bit of bit of kit." You know, so it's not even just just as a personal thing. The clients recognise what you're doing, and they see that you're taking a step in a different direction. You know, um, so it's good for good that they notice as well, but. If you want to get serious about your about your cutting, you need to get American clippers for, for doing really short hair and really tight lineups. I'd like to uh, continue down the educator route. Um, I find that very rewarding, and I find that um, teaching people, passing on your knowledge is, is you know that's a, it's a really good um, sense of fulfilment when you pass that on. Somebody can't do it, you pass the knowledge on, the practice, the practice, and then they get there, and you think, yeah, we just helped that guy do that, or girl do that, you know, it's, it's very fulfilling. Um, uh, the, the other thing would be uh, doing a bit more kind of stage platform work, stuff like that, um, which the, well, we've got the uh, Scottish Barber Bash coming up here in July. I think I might be doing some with that with Gary. Um, and, <coughs> but, you know, Bottom line is working behind the chair and keeping the clients happy. That's that's what it's about, you know. That's what that's what it's about every day for me, and um, yeah, that's that's what's next for me. I think.